Hey everyone, it's Robin Arsan Crafts and welcome to my studio. Today we are going to finish the Log Cabin Table Runner. As you can see, I've added the binding on and I've done the points. I'm going to show you how to miter your corners and how to stitch your binding down and how to fold it over and get that nice miter by machine, even if we have these weird funky angles going on here. As you can see, the table runner is all finished. Let's go ahead and get started. For the quilting, I just took red and I did some straight line diagonal quilting in the red and then I switched to green and did it over there. And I just kept alternating as I went down. So there's some green, there's some red, and I finished the green all the way out to the corner. The next step would be to create this point here. You can see that I went ahead and I trimmed all the way around. I did my standard trimming where I measured out from this line right here where the seam is. So I did an inch and a half there. And I think I did three and three quarters inches there. Just whatever it took to get it so all the edges are even and squared up. I wanna make sure whatever I did on this side, I did on this side and that at that end measures the same as that end. Following the directions, I can either just leave it as is and just have a square border, but we decided that we wanted to go ahead and have the point since most of us haven't done a point before. And what they did is really simple is they had me find the center point and I just marked it with a friction pen and I a tiny mark so that it stayed within the seam allowance just in case it doesn't come out with the heat. And then it said to mark three inches from the end here and here. Of course, I would repeat it on the other side also. I'm just gonna take my ruler and line it up at both of those marks. Now, if you're concerned, you can probably fold it in half and do the other side exactly. But since I know all of my numbers are equal, I should be fine just taking this here and trimming it off. My two little corner triangles there. I think what the important thing is, is to get the point as close to the center as you can, because if you put the point down to here, it's just going to look weird and awkward. If you're off by a quarter inch or something, I think you're probably going to be fine. You just want to get it as close to the center of the tip of your table runner as possible. And then if you're just making this on your own without this kit or a pattern, the three inches down, that's arbitrary. You can use whatever measurement you'd like, depending on how much of the fabric you want here and how much of an angle you want on your point. And after that, we're just going to put the binding on. So for the alternative border, it says whatever the width is that you used here to just go ahead and trim this up to that same width. That way it looks equal and even all the way around. If this is an inch and a half, you really don't want that to be three inches. I mean, you could, but it looks better if it's the borders are equal all the way around. This is one of those quick versions where they don't actually teach you how to do anything. So basically it comes down to quilt it the way you like it and sew the binding on the way you like it. So I have all of my pre-cut strips and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew mine to the back using a walk-in foot and a quarter inch seam and then I'm going to bring it around to the front and I will go ahead and machine stitch it down at that point. So I can use a decorative stitch, I can use the wave stitch, I can just stitch an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch from the edge, buttonhole stitch, there's a variety of things you can do. I'll probably just stick with simple and do a straight stitch, but I'll take this over to my machine and use my walking foot. I'm gonna attach my binding. I'll start on a long edge here and I'll leave myself about 12 inches or so and I'll just start around. I'm going to go ahead and just get it going and I'll show you how to do the corners. Now we'll see if I can keep my fingers out of the way enough for you guys to see this. I've already stitched down the long straight edge of this little table runner and here is the first corner that I'm coming to. I want to stop a quarter inch from this point just like I would in a normal corner because if this was a normal corner it would just be cut straight across here. So I'm going to ignore this little angle here and I'm just going to go ahead and stop a quarter inch 
from this area right here. Now when we normally do our corner, we would take our binding strip and we would fold it and everything and we would angle it up so that everything matches. I want to do the same thing here, but instead of having this straight line right here that I'm matching, I want to match it up to this angle. So I'm going to fold it up here. I keep moving this little piece right here until I have a straight line that lines up. I don't want it to be off to the side this way and I don't want it to be too far that way. So I'm going to bring it right down to the point, line it up. So that this edge is nice and straight. And then I'll fold it back down. And when I fold it down, I'm not lining it up to this edge at all because it's a weird angle. I'm gonna bring it down so that this folded piece comes right at that point. And I want to be able to line this back up to go straight down this way. Then I would stitch to the next section. Again, I'm gonna stop a quarter inch at this point right here. So I'm gonna stop a quarter inch going along this long side that we were just lining everything up on. And I'm gonna ignore this whole angle here. So I'm gonna pretend that this is a straight edge and just a quarter inch up, I'll stop. And I'm gonna do the same thing at this corner. I'm going to bring it up. Of course, I have a seam right there because I didn't double check. I try to lay them out and double check and everything and no matter how many times I do it and how much caution I put into it, I always end up having a seam wherever. So I just go ahead and learn how to deal with it. So once again, I'm gonna line my binding up. When I lift it up forwards, I'm gonna line it up along there. And when I fold it back, my fold is right here, so I'm not worrying about any of this. I'm just matching the fold up with my point right here. So this is exactly where my point is laying like this. So I'm just gonna line that up and make sure that it's going to be even. I don't wanna have it at a weird angle, so I wanna make sure it's gonna come straight back down this side. Again, stopping a quarter inch from the corner. Now I know some people will take their stitching here and they'll angle it out. If that's what you do, you can go ahead and angle that out to the corner again. And I'll just bring this one back up, lining it up so that this edge is there. And I don't wanna see any of this corner. It's really weird because you have you have this at such a strange angle that your mind normally says, no, no, that's wrong. But we wanna just pay attention to this outer edge here and make sure it lines up all the way up between our table runner and our binding. Bring it back down again, making sure we're not really far past that corner. I don't wanna line it up with anything up there. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and continue doing it. I have my long straight edge, and then I've already done, I've already finished this corner, so I will just go ahead and do connecting the binding strips together. Since these are all connected like this and not at an angle, I'll just go ahead and connect it. It'll be super simple compared to trying to miter that corner. I went ahead and took my iron and I pressed everything away to the outer edges so that I can go ahead and get the binding turned and flipped around. While you're quilting your corners, if you wanna stop and just check the corners out before you get too far along, you can just put your finger in there and pop the corner. So we have our little bit of our miter thing there. And when we're coming this way, we just need to be able to, again, bring a miter around. So if you can get some type of a little, that little basic look to it. I mean, of course, we tend to have to fuss around with it a little bit. Same thing up here. 
This one's a little bit harder because of the way the point goes. And of course I have that seam right there and it's not a diagonal seam. So since it's a straight centered seam like that, I'm noticing how difficult this one's going to be. But it's going to behave in the end and it's gonna sit right nice like it's supposed to. I'm going to press all of these edges that have already been stitched, the little bit that goes beyond. I'm going to press those all down just to make sure everybody lays nice and flat. I want to go ahead and use the glue method. I'm going to let the edge come over. I'm going to put some glue in the seam allowance and then I'll take it over to the machine and stitch it. I'm just using, this is a Dollar Tree version of the Elmer School Glue. This washes out so I have to make sure it's washable, dries fast and clear, strong hold, safe, non-toxic. Basically the same as the Elmer School Glue but maybe that glue is a little bit better but for my purposes I'm going to be in the seam allowance. It's not going to be shown anywhere and it washes out so that's good for me. I don't really I'm not holding two pieces of paper together, so it doesn't need to be perfect. You can do it without the glue, of course. We can just go ahead and use some clips. Just going to put a few dots, a thin line. I don't need, nor do I want, a lot of glue. Bring this over. And for the glue to hold, just heat it up with the iron and dry it. And that's going to hold in place. You could put some clips in to hold it temporarily. You can skip the glue completely and just bring this over. Tuck in any loose threads. Put some clips on it and do it that way. So I'm gonna finish getting this all prepared and then we'll take it over to the sewing machine and we'll do the last stitch to hold down the binding. My edges are all held down. I do not glue my corners at all. I like to leave those to manipulate them now and then at the sewing machine. So I like to just go ahead and give an idea of about where it's gonna be. I bring one side over. Sometimes when I look at it, it's like maybe it'll go this way and then other times maybe it'll work better in the other direction. Sometimes you have to switch up which way your miter is gonna go. And I think it works better this way. I don't want to struggle with it. I don't want to fight with it. So whichever way the fabric wants to go, that's the way I want it to go. So this one has that seam, so it has me sewing less bulk if I go this direction. So you just play with it a little bit and get it to move. You want to be covering up over your stitching line. That is your really big concern. And you want to make sure it just lays nice and flat and that you don't have anything weird going on like this. You don't want to have the two pieces that don't meet up. So you want to just move them around and adjust where your fold is, where that miter corner is based on so that you come and you have it just like you would a regular quilt and it connects right through like that. Machine binding down, I don't believe they allow that in quilt shows anyway, so we're just going to do this to where it's going to be nice and sturdy, it's going to look nice, and it's going to last through multiple washings throughout the year. Now, if you are doing this for a quilt show, then you're going to take a little bit different approach to it. You're going to sew your binding to the front, bring it to the back, and you're going to hand stitch everything. But for a quick company's coming over tonight or tomorrow, and I just need to get this finished type of project, I'm going to go ahead and machine stitch my binding down. So once I get these all set, I'll take it over to the machine and I will stitch around it. 
I've changed to my regular presser foot. There's an edging foot that has a little metal thing that will glide right along here that'll help keep it there. I, have, I believe I have other videos for it. I'll see if I can find like a binding playlist or something for you guys that I'll link down below in the description box. Today, I'm just gonna use my regular presser foot. Then I'm gonna stitch a top stitch about an eighth of an inch or thereabouts all the way along here. As I said, you can use a, a buttonhole stitch. You can do a wave stitch all the way along here that would cover all of it. Any type, I have that, that one feather stitch that I like to do, that, that would cover both of them. I just wanna ride it here and I'd have some on the top and some on the binding. You just wanna make sure you're holding your binding down. So however you get to that point and whatever stitch you wanna use, it's fun to experiment with some of the other stitches. Using the edging's foot would give you a nice perfect stitch going all the way along. But if you don't have that edging foot, you can go ahead and eyeball it. Now I'm gonna stitch down until I get to about an inch or so from the corner. Making sure everyone, because I don't have any glue in this area, so I just want to make sure everyone stays where they belong. Now, I already went and did my corner, but I can just double check to make sure that my point right here where this piece comes to that corner, I want that point of that corner to line right up with this edge here. So I can use, this is a knitting needle, double pointed knitting needle, but you can use a stiletto or anything that works, a pin. And as I get closer, I just want my presser foot to hold it down. So once it does that, go slow. I do tend to take an extra stitch and then back stitch. And then I'll turn my corner, get myself all lined back up. And then just keep stitching. And then when I get to the corner, I'll just repeat the same process. Got a little close this time, but everything's nice and lined up. Hold things down with my little needle, stiletto thing. I tend to go one or two stitches past just to make sure that it's like locked in place and held in there. So that's it, I'm just gonna keep continuing along, checking all of my corners as I go, make sure everyone's laying down nice and neat. And then just working through the straightaways. This part, of course, you just have to hold it down and not go too fast, but it's just a straight line, so it's pretty easy to stitch. There she is, all done. Look at the front, look at the back. I think the plaid was a really nice choice for this little table runner. So the biggest tip I can give you guys besides going slow and taking it easy is to make sure you do not get a seam, specifically in the tips in the point here. Now I've had seams in my regular quilts in the corners before, and you can usually work your way around it, especially if you've cut your binding strips on the diagonal versus butting them together. So butting them together and having that point did create a bit of thickness there. But I was able to go ahead and get it pressed down, give it a little bit of a treatment with the wood block so everything is held down nicely there. So I think with four of your log cabin blocks, just a little bit of a border, go ahead and go straight if you don't want to deal with any of those points. But I think it makes a really nice table runner. Now, one of the things you do have to realize too is when we machine stitch it from the front, the way I sewed mine down, I have a smaller binding on the back than I do on the front. So when I did the stitching here, it shows up on the back of the quilt as a little bit of an outline going all the way around. You can see it there in the white. That's just something that happens if your binding isn't equal on both sides. A lot of times if you do it from where you stitch it to the front and you bring it to the back and then you can stitch in the ditch and it'll catch it right along there. So that's another way to do it. 
there's a few different ways you can go ahead and machine stitch your binding down. So your code word for today will be glue because I used glue to baste all of my binding down and it held it in place really nice and I didn't have to worry about clips. I was able to manipulate my binding so that it went across my stitching line and it held it all in place and I didn't have to worry about it when I went to the sewing machine. Plus I can glue it today and sew it tomorrow and it'll still be fine. So thanks for hanging out with me today and thanks for hanging out with me all during December when I struggled with this project. Some projects can give us a little bit of a headache, but in the end, if we persevere, we can get them done. Sometimes they're not as perfect as we'd hoped they would be, but it's still going to be a very use usable table runner. And if you had a little problem somewhere, like if things didn't match up exactly in one spot or another, put a little bit of a candle there, put a dish of cranberries or something there, and nobody will see it. By looking at this table runner, nobody would have known that it came from a kit, that all the pieces were exact, and I had to be careful with my stitching. Nobody's going to know, unless of course they watch these videos, that I tried quilting it once and it didn't work. Apparently, muscle memory doesn't last forever, and that if you don't use a skill, you will lose that skill. So now I know this year coming up in 2022 that I need to go ahead and do more free motion quilting and bring that skill back to myself. So if I do end up doing a project like this or a quilt, I will have the ability to do it without hopefully unpicking too many stitches. So thanks for hanging out with me. Thank you for the support and I'll see you guys next year. Bye.